All right, I'm going to tell you guys a story about why you should always be afraid. Um, <laughs> this, happened, this happened here in, uh, in, in Portland when I was 19 years old. Um, it's kind of a scary story, uh, but it's true. Um, I was 19, uh, and so was my friend Brian, and uh, his mom was out of town. So it's time for malt liquor and weed, right? <laughs> and when you have malt liquor and weed and you're 19, you don't need anyone else besides your buddy. Two people in a house, right? We cranked the stereo, we danced around, we got drunk, we got high. Two guys alone. That's not gay, <laughs> or so we thought. And I mean dancing, full on dancing throughout the house, right? Not even, not even considering, you know, how, how homoerotic that might appear to somebody. And it, 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 it rolled around uh, 2, 2.30 in the morning. And we're like, all right, let's go to bed. Uh, he's like, all right, you sleep in my mom's room. I'll sleep down in the basement where I'm, my bedroom is. So I go to his mom's room. He goes down in the basement. And I hear him clearly say from the basement, dude, what the fuck? But not to me. And I'm like, what? And he, I go down there. He was talking to me. He's holding a can of Guinness that he brought back from Ireland with a pull tab up, right? And he's like, dude, I brought this back from Dublin. Why did you drink this? And I'm like, I didn't, man. And he's like, don't fuck with me. And I'm like, I didn't. And he's like, well, okay. Why did you make that couch up like a bed with a blanket and a pillow? And I'm like, I didn't do that. And he's like, dude, don't fuck with me. And I'm like, hey, you don't fuck with me. And we literally went from, hey, don't fuck with me, to, come on, seriously, to, please. Please tell me you did that. Please. <laughs> I will pay you any money if you admit to that, please. And then we just realized, holy shit, someone's in the house, okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He gets a bat, I get a frying pan, because evidently that poon sound is awesome to me when I hit someone in the head with my frying pan. I'm a frying pan Mando. And we're going through the house, the drunkest, most high, two-man, shitty SWAT team you've ever heard of. And we're going like door to door, like closets, and every time we open a closet or a pantry, one of us is on the door, the other one's on frying pan or bat duty, and it's a minor heart attack every time. Like, one, two, oh, God! Okay, no one's in there. Okay, thank God, right? And we went through the whole house. I mean, we looked in fucking photo albums. Nothing. We couldn't find anything, right? And we finally just drop our weapons and go, okay, it's a ghost. And ghosts are real. All right. We've decided ghosts are real. We start talking to the ghost. Hey, ghost, listen, have a great night. Drink all the beer you want. Enjoy the bed. Didn't know you could feel material things or drink alcohol. But hey, live it up, man, right? We're going to go to bed. And we went to bed. That's how tired we were. Like, I don't know, I could get stabbed in the night, but I just really need to go to sleep, dude. I'm so tired. We sleep the night through. Well, I wake up in the morning. I get up, and I hear Brian coming up the stairs from the basement. And I hear him say, hey, how's it going there? I'm nowhere near him. <laughs> I go around the corner, and there's a little homeless girl picking at a scab on her hand, staring at nothing. She walks out the screen door and out of our lives forever. She was in the house the whole night! The whole night! In the house! She was in the house the whole night!